In this series we're going to look at mixing drums and percussions, synths and vocals. If you want to learn more mixing techniques, make sure you check out our courses at pointblanklearning.com. Today we're talking about mixing in Logic Pro X. The first part of this multi-series is especially about drums and percussion in electronic music. Let's jump right in and listen to the final master. Okay, let's start with the kick. Um, this is the kick that was given to me. I started with a mid-side EQ. I rolled off um, the side signal. I cut it everything below 55 hertz. Very subtle. And then I used um, the SSL channel strip. Um, I bypassed the, the EQ over here this side. I only used the low cut at 32, uh, high cut, and I used the compressor. As you can hear, it's not like a big difference, but um, the SSL channel adds a, a certain tone to the kick. It sounds a little bit smoother. Finally, I added a um, parallel compression chain over here where I increased the very low end that was cut out in the original signal. There are a lot of like tutorials uh, with this technique, so I, I don't want to go into detail. This is just a, a basic compressor with really fast release and fast attack minus 10 dB gain reduction and then I added a pull tech EQ to boost the, the low end at 30. Without the uh, parallel compression chain. And with it, let's hear it in the mix. Okay, the, the kick cut through a lot better and um, this is a technique that I use in all my mixes with slightly different settings. Uh, you should definitely mess around with the attack and the uh, release time. Instead of the, the power compression, you can add a um, sub oscillator in Logic. Let's do that really quick. All you have to do is open a new software instrument track and then insert the test oscillator. After that, you have to find out the key of the song and then Google for like frequencies and then you'll get something like that, uh, which says um, A, let's say this song is an A, so it's 55 is the, the key frequency. Okay, let's set this oscillator to 55. And then after that, we're gonna use a gate and we side chain that with the trigger kick, which is audio 7. All right, here we go. So 
So whenever the, the kick hits, the sub oscillator hits too. The next drum element are the claps that were bounced together into one stem over here. I just added a basic compressor to control the peaks a little bit. I also added a parallel compression chain for the clap, pretty similar to the kick. Um, same compressor, fast attack, fast release. Let me exa exaggerate that really quick. And then um, one thing I often use in my latest mixes is a transient designer, especially for hi-hats and uh, claps. Um, you can easily place high frequency elements by reducing or boosting the attack. Let me show you that. Over here, I boosted the attack a little bit and I um, reduced all the sustain. So it's really clappy and really short. You just hear the first hit. And then I mix that slightly back to the original signal. You can use any transient designer. Um, there is a, a Logic stock plugin called Enveloper. So over here you can increase the attack. You can uh, reduce the sustain. So that might work. And there is um, a free plugin by a company called uh, Flux. It's called Bittersweet. That's pretty much the same. You can make it a, a bit smoother. Or oh, this, this is how you bring it more to the front, more in your face. I did that with the hi-hats in this track as, uh, as well, so let me show you that with the hi-hats. The percussion bus or hi-hats over here are very important for genres like uh, Deep House or Future House. And they are the main element for the feeling and the groove of the song, especially the off, uh, the off hi-hat in, in house music. So the, the goal is to, to have them in your face, very loud, but without being harsh or sharp. I started with the SSL compressor, which is sidechained to the kick. You have to mess around with uh, attack and release times. This can change the whole record. Shorter release times will leave more space for other elements and it sounds a bit more punchy. Then a basic low cut EQ, um, the pull tech to color the sound a little bit, 
and then again the transient designer to make the I reduced the the attack time to make it a little bit smoother If I increase the attack, you can hear that the, the heights are more to the front. And if I reduce the attack, they are more to the back. Uh, limiter to cut the peaks and transients so that they don't fight with the vocals later in the track. Hello. Another EQ where I cut uh, at 3.7 and a de-esser to make them less sharp. I often use de-essers on hi-hats, cymbals and even on acoustic guitar to make the part between 3 to 5k a little smoother. And at the end a high-cut filter so that the hi-hats don't fight with the vocals and especially with the, the delays of the vocal. Okay, that was part one. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. it.